Are we live? Hello, everybody. Um, the last time I did an English podcast, I read a lot of your comments, and everyone was very happy, saying, "Finally, an English podcast." So today, I will do a second one with uh, someone I really admire. My uncle. Uh, his name is Woody. Just a little bit of background. Um, he was. Well, he's the reason why one of the big reasons why I was born in uh, California, and the reason why I can speak English. So uh, I'm very grateful for that. A little bit of background: He was born in Thailand, born and raised in the slums of Thailand, very poor. Uh, he ended up becoming a Marine for the U.S. and then became the first Thai LAPD officer. And then became a sergeant, right? Yes, sergeant. And before that, I was a detective too. Ah, uh, de and also a detective. And then he ended up becoming the vice president of a very famous car manufacturer named Thai Summit, where they produce what kinds of cars? Uh, they do. Uh, they do for the big three: uh, Ford. Big customer yeah. Chrysler and a uh, little bit GM. No, right now they do uh, Tesla too. Oh yeah. Yes. Yes. So, but so now my uncle has lived a very long and hard life, and now he just wants to relax and play golf all the time, right? Yes. But then also he um, every day, every can every day. <laughs> um, lots, lots of experience. I would, I would think of him as like Yoda. And then I love talking to him. So now I'm very glad that um, my English audience gets to hear the way that he thinks and his experience. So I, I'm sure everyone wants to know how did you get out of this? I know you tell this story many times, but maybe just a summary: How did you get out of the slums and become uh, a, a policeman in America? It just seems so, so like impossible to do. Well, you know, uh, everything happened is the way. Just no, no, no good planning. Mm -hmm. What they did is, uh, my dad sent me to school in Taiwan. When I was, he won the lotto. <laughs> he won you know, the lotto. He won a lotto, and uh, it's only. So I think some Eng uh, Americans or English people will think the lotto is like millions of dollars. No, it's not. How how much is it? Uh, it's not that much. At the time, is maybe not even a million baht Thai. <laughs> okay, so not even like thirty thousand dollars. Yes, right? yeah. but that's uh, almost fifty years ago, mm -hmm. right? So he sent me to uh, Taiwan to go to the uh, vocational school, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is high school level, and I don't even speak Chinese. I don't even know how to read, read Chinese. Why did he choose Taiwan? Because he won. He, he my dad uh, came from China. Okay. But uh, he escaped from China because of the communist. She went to. So he think that the the best way is to send me to Taiwan, which is a, f a d democratic con country. Oh, he escaped when it was like Mao Zedong. Yes. Like yes. killing everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy actually killed the most people in the world more than Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. Mao Zedong. Uh, yeah. But he's the one who uh, put the country together, though. Uh, you uh, know? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> bad thing and good thing. Yes. Uh, so I did uh, went to Taiwan and uh, like I have a very difficult understanding my uh, teacher, you know. Mm -hmm. So when I took the I'm, the only thing that I be able to. Finished and complete my my homework is uh, uh, math, math and then English a little bit you know right. because I have a basic English in Thailand right uh, Chinese uh, literature I got uh, when I took the exam I got a zero out of hundred points so I didn't uh. make anything <laughs> uh. so uh, but uh, after a year I know that I d didn't learn anything <laughs> except the language I be able to speak and talk. But I can no, I don't know how to really read it, mm -hmm. you know. So I asked my friend, uh, which is uh, older th than me, 
uh, to send me the I twenty to to go to US. I mm. want to continue my education there, right? Uh. Plus, I can earn money. I can work. You know. Oh yeah. So I, he did send me the I twenty, and I went to apply for the thing, and I. Even though I don't have any money at all, I you know I I I be able to make it. It's it's really really funny story, you know, because I was working at the uh, on my part time job when I go to school in Thailand as a tour company. So I get a chance to go to many country, and uh, and I go to school in Taiwan for one year, right? My passport was stamped with the, a lot of country, you uh. know. So when I apply for the visa. U.S. government thing. Uh, my family is rich, but it's not. Oh. So I don't, I'm not. I'm, I'm not telling a lie, but I didn't tell the whole truth, right? Yeah. Oh. So one of the main reasons you got to go was because they thought you had money. They thought my family had money. Wow. Right. So I get to go. I get to go, and then I, I, go to language school in Linwood High School, Linwood Adult School. You know, language, and uh, in in the middle of the. Nearby Compton, you know, South Central, Whoa. right? And uh, yeah, I get along well with uh, Africa, uh, African American, you know, no problem. Yeah. We get along. I, you know, they have a nice uh, landlord who actually helping me, you know. So, and then I get a, and then I get a job. I get a, a work, and I met my first wife, and she. I work for her dad. My wife's a white Caucasian, mm. so uh, and then I be, uh, become the uh, green card uh-huh. holder, so I can work, yes. you know. But I, but my goal, you know, I listen to my dad. My dad want me to be a mechanic, a aviation mechanic, so we can earn a lot of money, mm-hmm. can support my family. So I, I. I told my father-in-law that I, at the time, my ex-father-in-law, that I want to be a avi- aviation mechanic. Uh. He said, "Yeah, you should go uh, join the air force, oh. so they can train you." Yeah. So I went to the recruit center, and I cannot find a parking space for air force, army, and navy. Only marine. So I stop at marine, <laughs> and oh, I wow. look at the poster. I said, "Wow, this is the." Awesome uniform, good-looking oh. uniform, you know. And you know that at the time they say a few, a proud, a marine, right? Wow. So I want to be a proud and a few. <laughs> so I joined the marine. Oh, cool. Yeah. So uh, I end up uh, not working in uh, aviation. I become a, a supply administration instead, you know, because I want to go to the academy as soon as I can. So. Uh, after a few years on the, on the in the marine, you know, uh, I have a chance to take the test, and they want to send me to the prep school to be a, uh, to go to officer school. So they send me to college. So when I finish my college, I become an officer in the marine, right? Yeah. We call MISEP program. So I did that for for a year, and I have to meet. Happen to be they need uh, in San Diego. They need somebody to be interpreter for the uh, drug enforcement administration. We have a Thai witness who doesn't speak English, mm. so they asked me to be an interpreter. And at the time, I get to talk to the DEA agent, mm-hmm. and they all say, "Hey, Woody, you should join the police department. You know, we need you more than the in the marine. You know." Uh. So I, I was I wanted to be a policeman when I was young. So now my my opportunity to be a policeman is wow. right there, right? So I I went back and quit my my school. My captain told me you can quit the school, but you owe us two years of your life because you we send you to school for one year. Now you have to make you, instead of four year enlistment, now I have to do six years. So I have to do two extra years as a in marine. Oh yeah, and then uh, after that I. I was staying in uh, Camp Pendleton, uh, San Diego, the uh, depot, right mm-hmm. in San Diego. So I joined the uh, San Diego Police Reserve. I want to see how I how I like it or not, mm. and I like it a lot. So I then start to uh, 
take the exam with the California Highway Patrol, with San Diego Police Department, and uh, with the Los Angeles Police Department. And I picked the uh, Los Angeles. I got accepted to all three of them, but I picked Los Angeles yes. because Los Angeles is the uh, is the best police department the way I know mm-hmm. in the United States in the world. We are we are ex- we are the model agency for the whole world. You know, the SWAT team was built by Los Angeles. Oh, you know, the uh, drug resistant ex- education program is also uh, built by. Uh, Los Angeles Police mm-hmm. Department, uh, neighborhood watch program, everything yeah. you know. So oh, we, okay. everybody just copy LAPD. Oh, okay. You know. so, so, I, I just I re I remember hearing something like a in an interview there was a policeman that said, uh, or a detective he said, if you follow the, the drugs you will get to, like the drug addicts and the dealers. And then the, somewhere else, and then he said, "But if you follow the money, that will take you like so far down, a, like a a hole. Like it's the it never ends, and it gets more dangerous. Like, did you ever have that experience, or is that even true? It's what a drug dealer. Like uh, they said, like if you follow the drugs, uh-huh. it, it will only take you to like a certain point. But uh-huh. if you fo- if you like follow the money, like the drug dealing money and." Uh, I don't know how to phrase the question. You cannot go back. You get deep and deeper, right? Yeah, yeah. You know when you when you are using people, a drug user, right? The light is very short, expensive. When you are uh-huh. drug dealer, yeah. You know you get addicted to the money. You not get addicted to the drug, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, when you get involved in a drug business, you cannot quit. Mm-hmm. You quit either your guy kill you or. The people are higher than you kill you because you know uh, too much. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you don't quit, you get arrested by the police. One of these days, you gonna get arrested. Yeah, you know, oh, thing that you keep doing it, you know, wrong thing. One of these days, the police will arrest you. Mm-hmm. Right, this is the normal vicious circle. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, either way is no good. Follow the drug is bad. Okay, follow the money, illegal money. Uh, uh, drug money is very bad. I see. You know, okay. so in, when I work in, uh, I also, uh, when I become a detective yeah. with the Los Angeles Police Department, I was recruited to work in a uh, uh, Colombian drug. You know, I work in major violet, oh. violator. So we follow a bad guy for a long time, and when we know exactly what they do for six months, we got search warrant for 11, 12 location, and we be able to uh, arrest and seizure a lot of drug, a lot of money, you know. Wow. So, like I say, money is bad. So we, when we see money, when I see money, I yell real loud, money, and then everybody yeah. come here and we take videotape, so make everybody uh, honest. Oh. This is the way we procedure in LAPD. You know, you when you see money, you yell real loud, and everybody come and see it, and then, uh, you know, we, oh. when we do a search warrant, we we uh, videotape from the beginning okay. and to the end to make sure that we don't destroy anything. Mm-hmm. People cannot complain that uh, we did anything wrong. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. We have evidence that and we do the right thing. The reason you yell money is so I guess no one like takes money. Also, nobody taking money. Okay. We are money is a very evil temptation mm-hmm. for people to do a wrong thing. Yeah, to justify to do I I can. Use this money to go buy equipment and something. And that what happened to the uh, LA sheriff before. Like there are a group of the oh. drug uh, enforcement with uh, aside to the sheriff department many years ago. They all get arrested l- later on because they justify that okay, we can use drug money to fight against drug. Don't do that. Oh, I see. Yeah, you I know, see. don't don't even think about it. You know, I mean, the wrong thing doesn't justify the mean yeah. at, at the be- at the end. Yeah. Speaking of money, I when um you, when I heard this story, if Peach was there too, she 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 said something really interesting about uh, uh, your dad, my grandpa. He said he won the lotto, like he got money, and he didn't spend it, and he was smart enough to know to educate the oldest son, like send him to school, 
And uh, Peach said that. And that was really uh, like a good observation that I saw because most people would spend money on on things, right? Like they would buy a car or like alcohol or, you know, uh, upgrade things. But he decided to upgrade your, your mind because I guess he, he knew that if you were educated, the money would come in the end, which it did. Yes. Now, now you're you're a wealthy man. You don't <laughs> I'm have to work okay, anymore. man. Yeah. <laughs> Not wealthy. Yeah, yeah. Like I say, I have enough money to to live comfortable. Yeah. My whole life because I work for the police department. They give me a good uh, pension. Yeah. And I also invest in a property, which is uh, give me a good return. But yes. I have to pay a lot of tax, but that's okay. Yeah. You know, uh, that's and my, my dad. I, he's a educator. He likes uh. to he likes to get himself educated. You know, mm, mm. my mom many times when I was young, she she want me to go to work. When nice. I finished my fourth grade school, she said, "Go to work, go help make money." Mm. And then I did that. Right when my dad came came home, he said, "Hey, how come you didn't go to school?" Uh, oh. Mom doesn't want me to go to school, so yeah. he said, "No, you go go back to school." So I. You know, the school already started a couple of months. I was always behind, but I back to school and be able to, you know. My first year, my first school year, you know, I was nine years old. I was the biggest kid in, the, in my class, yeah. you know. So by the time I graduate, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm old. But I, I think because I want to learn, that's why I learn pretty fast. You mm-hmm. know, because I, to me, it's almost like a present to me. You know, when to to uh, be able to go to school like, like the rest of the kid. Yeah. You know, which is I didn't have the opportunity. Um. A lot of kids that grew up today, you know, they they don't want to go to school. You, you they think that uh, because think that easy for them, they can have it anytime they want. Mm-hmm. So they don't they don't want to go. Yeah, especially me because I feel like everything's online. Yeah. But the problem with that is the the self discipline to educate yourself. Exactly. I, I feel like school is necessary for people that if they don't have self-discipline, like right. you need to go to school for eight hours and someone will watch you. Yeah. Right. But then if you're somebody that is self-disciplined, I feel like you can learn more than if you were to like learn online and read by yourself. But it's very hard to find someone it's true. self-disciplined. It's true. One, uh, but in certain point right yeah but you cannot read and write by yourself you have to yeah you have to go to a basic oh have to yeah read and write right. first right? right yeah so the cool the school at 50 years ago 60 years ago they don't have a uh, online <laughs> education yeah, they don't have right. anything yeah so uh, you depend on the teacher to teach to to teach you right yeah so uh, you know and at the time you know uh, the teacher in in Thailand they'd be able to discipline the kid too Mm-hmm. If you don't do a good, uh, you, don't, you don't do your homework, you don't follow their, their instruction, yeah. they can beat you up <laughs> with a stick, yeah. you know. And they get beat up many times too. Uh-huh. You know? So, uh, and my dad beat me up many times with the stick, with uh-huh. everything, you know. But, uh, but it's, I sometimes think I deserve it, mm-hmm. you know. And I, that make me what I am today because I... I I learn from the hard way. I learn, you know, and you know, I just keep doing it, you know. Mm-hmm. So, in order to make the kids successful, you know, uh, in Thailand they're doing the wrong way right now. Mm. They provide the kid everything because when they was a kid, they don't have everything that their mom and dad can give to them. Mm-hmm. So they, when they can afford it, they spoil them mm-hmm. instead of. Uh, teach them how to be successful not teach them how to to have money <laughs> yeah to, you know to make money is one thing uh, to yeah. become successful to helping people to giving that's a part of l- real life you know mm-hmm. if you if you be able to to work and be, become a good citizen mm-hmm. then you know what everything come will come in like I say my dad think about Making me educate, right? Yeah. So I can make money later on. Yeah. Right. The same way we should educate our people mm-hmm. to do the right thing. Yeah. We, we should start it now. Yeah. It's very difficult for the parent to become very disciplined, not to give them everything, right? 
Yeah. Then just easy to okay. The kid asks you, hey, can I have a can I have a cell phone? Can I have this? Okay, go ahead. No, don't do that. Mm. You spoil them yeah. in the wrong way. You have to have make sure they earn it. Why? Give me the reason. Mm. And what you want? To, if I give you a cell phone, what you gonna do for me? Yeah. You know, yeah. they have to have a uh, everything in life. You know, you give them too easy, they not appreciate it. Yeah. You know. I I think one of the best things that ever happened to me was when my mom decided to stop giving me money, and uh, I remember that uh, there was a time that I only had 70 baht, which is like two dollars, and then I bought chicken and rice in for me and my friend. And then after that, I had to like, I had friends that would buy me food, but I have to like wash their dishes and clean the floor. And then I would sleep on their couch. And I remember like, that's the time that I appreciated money and life. And I learned a lot at that time. So oh, yeah, yeah. I thought, I think uh, for like, it was a very good experience that I didn't have money for the time. So for uh, people that don't know, well, that aren't Thai, my uncle is actually very well known in, in Thailand. And he also has a book. Can I have the book, please? This is for uh, also Thai people because this is a Thai book. So we're going to uh, give these away at the uh, near, near the end of the podcast. So if anyone's watching, listening, uh, we will maybe ask questions or do like something at the end to give these away. Also, uh, the shirts. Think positive. Yeah, Dr. Woody, also PhD. Yeah. I give these shirts away. And this is him, right here. <laughs> My dream to become a teacher ah. and to, to uh, pay golf. Be a part-time job ah. on a golf thing and a teacher. When they retire. Yeah. I don't want just retire and retire and drop dead, you know. I want yeah, to yeah. keep give back to the community. Oh yeah, you, you know, you have to. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I make money or not, but teaching, you know, even uh, uh, any college or any school, you know, I. But I don't want to, like I say, I I, I don't care about money. Yeah. I care about what can I do to contribute to the society. Yes. Because I no. saw you uh, give a, to- a picture of you giving a, a talk for uh, the Thai police force, right? Recently. No, no, no. That's a uh, uh, security. Security. Company. Uh. So, but I used to give a lecture to the police academy mm-hmm. many years ago. And I used to give a lecture to the uh, in- superintendent mm-hmm. school in Thailand. Many years ago too, you know. Mm. But uh, I like to go straight to the point, and I like to tell them to be proud of themselves, Mm -hmm. being a policeman. You know, don't forget about what your udomgan, you know, your your goal Mm. to protect and serve, not to do anything wrong, you know. Mm. So, but uh, we still need a lot of education yes you can do that <laughs> in in uh, Thailand um, do you think everyone that is in the like maybe poor can they all make it do do what you did like make it to the top because you've you've met the the royal family in Thailand you've met like big like top politicians and then like the top business owners and you you really came from the the bottom and you always say uh we didn't come from zero you came from negative right 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 so then yeah what what do you think about that somebody that's in that position now you know when you uh is no excuse that you're born poor mm-hmm. but it, uh, it's a uh, is a uh, it's your responsibility not to die poor. You know? Oh, that's if, cool. If you die poor, then it means you're doing something wrong. You know, oh. you know, you know, you cannot 
make a choice to born rich, right? Yeah. But you know, you can die rich. Uh, it's not your choice to be born poor, but it's your choice to die poor. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So you know, uh, don't give up. You know, I people say, oh, you're lucky. Oh, choke the mark, they be. It's not choke. It's not you know, choke is mean good luck. You know what the uh, the combination of good luck, hard mm. work, and it meets uh, preparation. Exactly. Hard work. w e n o no opportunity meets preparation. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and then you uh, you keep doing it, persistent. Yeah. You know, like you know, I, I never done anything one time and f- and become successful. Mm. You know, especially. My English is uh, my second language, yeah. my third language actually. Right? Yeah. Uh, when I took the exam to become a sergeant, it take me twice. Right? But I, I'm lucky, you know. I take me only one time to become a, a detective. Mm-hmm. The reason it take me twice uh, to become sergeant, you know, each time it take two years to take an exam. Only give you exam every two year, right? Mm-hmm. Because my score wasn't high enough, they put me on the eligibility list, right? Uh-huh. And I didn't make it from oh, that promotion, so I have to take the test again. That's why you see a lot of policemen in the uh, U.S. Right? They're not a sergeant, they're not a detective, they're only a typical policeman, because maybe they enjoy what they're doing, maybe because they they fail the examination, they you know you have to study a lot, yeah, you know. You uh, not the like Thai police. You stay long enough, you get promoted, you know. But in U.S., you have to take a test. Mm. You have to pass the exam, and very rich, is very, very, very difficult exam. Yeah. Uh, exam in U.S. is the process il- of uh, elimination, not like in college, right? The process of to pass you. Yeah. But in uh, real life, when you go to the uh, uh, education, I mean, when you go to market for for job, right? It's a process of il- il- elimination, you know. They don't want you to, they don't want everybody to pass. They want only a good people to pass. Yeah, you know. Uh, that's why it's very difficult. Mm-hmm. It's not like a life in a in a college or life in a school. Yeah, you know, because the teacher want to make himself look good but pass everybody, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, when you co- when you fighting for a job, you know, then you know you have to be better than the other person next to you. Yeah. Right. So uh, never give up. Mm-hmm. If you f- if you fail the first time, you know, then you get up and dust yourself off and keep doing it mm-hmm. until you get it. Mm-hmm. You know, like you know, like everything in life. I when I graduate from the police academy, I wasn't an expert when they shoot my pistol. Yeah. I'm only a sharp shooter. But you know what? I, n- I never give up. I want to be an expert, so I went to practice a lot after mm. I graduate. Right? Yeah. It take me a year become a, become an expert, yeah. right? And then later on, I become a distinguished expert, which is they give me more money. Mm-hmm. But you know, because I don't, I never give up. Mm. When I want to do something in life, I never give up. Yeah, I I have a question about the the physical um, the attributes because. I can imagine if you came from a poor family. Like I remember hearing about, like you would have to shit, like eat food from leftovers from the from the grandma when she would sell, right? No, she she was a cook. She, she was, was a, a cook. cook. Okay. So she cooked for uh, the family. Oh, okay. And then uh, once she finished feeding them, right? Yeah. Whatever leftover, she bring, uh, she brought it home, and and okay. uh, I get to eat yeah. after. Uh, Little lake in yeah. the morning. So she would cook for another family. Whatever's left over, you guys get to eat. Yes. So I can imagine when you go to be a marine, you're probably not as strong as everybody else or a policeman, right? Like, did you exercise, like lift weights? Bef- no, I never right? did. I was yeah. skinny one. Yeah, you were probably the skinniest, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I can imagine. So the language problem. You, you. It's your third language, and then also you're really skinny. So I can see like that you had to work like way harder than everybody else. Right. So, how how did you get over the the physical thing? Like how did you? Well, as a be as a beginning. Yeah. Uh, I didn't do good. I can't even run half a mile without 
get you know gets I cannot breathe you know my I hurt my side you know on this thing you know yeah. when you run you know but the, uh, but the DI do instructor mm-hmm. they fought me to run oh. so I keep on running I keep you know get my second win third win and then uh, keep on running and then, so I become uh, uh, a good runner later on mm-hmm. and then at that time I become a I enjoy running. Oh. I wasn't enjoy running before. I never run, you know, except yeah. from uh, my car to my house, you know, <laughs> if yeah. I in a hurry. But this uh, when in the marine, you know, you have to run at least uh, three mile mm-hmm. minimum, and uh, to get a hundred point in uh, in jo- uh, running, you have to do it in uh, uh, eighteen minute, mm-hmm. six minute mile, right? And you have to be able to do a pull up, twenty pull up to get a hundred point. 20 pull up, right? Yeah. And then uh, you have to do a sit up in 80 sit up in two minutes, <laughs> you know. So at the beginning, I cannot do all that. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I, I, I didn't keep up. Mm-hmm. I keep on doing. Yeah. And I, I, I get everything, you know, I get maximum mm-hmm. score, right? And I never shoot my rifle, I never touched the gun before in my life, not firearm, mm-hmm. you know. And then I be able to get my uh, dis- uh, expert in M16 when oh, I was cool. in the uh, boot camp, right? And then uh, I be able to sh- swim uh, to qualify to a uh, uh, water survival qualify, which is mm-hmm. the highest in the in the marine, right? Mm-hmm. And then I be able to do many things. So when I graduate from the uh, boot camp, I got promoted to a PFC one uh, first private first class. Cool. Out of the hundred some people, only six people get promoted. Wow. Right. From someone that had no physical background, no athletic background. Exactly. So no no English background too. Yeah. <laughs> when that's they crazy. Say, when they say left face, they say what 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 yeah. are you talking about? You know. The I only <laughs> I only come to United States, came to United States only one one year. Yeah. And I joined the Marine, you know. I mean the reason I joined yeah. the Marine because I want to learn the the language. Oh, uh, so the, I learned it hard way. Yeah, and yeah. they yell at you, and they yeah. they say they, they oh, say curse words all the oh, time. All the time in yeah. my ear, you know. Yeah. So wow, it just makes me s- more amazed because every everyone else, what what were their ethnicity and nationality? Most uh, uh, white and. Uh, uh, African American people, yeah, so they and then Hispanic, the yeah. But so they born in United States. Yeah, that that's you know. crazy that yeah. you can out of a hundred, you you're one of the six private first class, right? Right. And then that 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 just makes me think of like how how is that possible? Because they they they're probably African, like more athletic, right? And then they all speak the language, and yeah, I, I just I don't I the attitude the attitude. Right, me, I want to be better. My mm-hmm. attitude is that I want to do, be able to do exactly what they can do, mm-hmm. or, or do better. Mm-hmm. But the people that born in the United States, right, they say, "Oh, I have the right to be in this country. I don't have to prove oh. anything. They have to give it to me." The attitude is more than to be successful. Attitude is very important. Wow, right? You have to have a positive attitude. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my. Like I say, in order not to keep up, you have to have a positive attitude yeah. all the time. Did you ever think about like this is too hard? Like why am I doing this? I did, but you know what? Only if when I tire, when I you know, and then I I went to sleep, get up, and wow, in a new day. I think new, I think positive again. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. You know, so. That's the only way to to keep you survive in a boot camp. What was the worst time in the boot camp? camp? Did you ever cry and think like I want to go back home to Thailand or no? Never. <laughs> never. Because Thailand's worse, right? Than, yes. Than, th- than being. Yeah. A boot camp. I I, I think see. about my family who waiting for me to bring them to United States. Wow. Uh, I joined the Marine because I learned that uh, if you married. Uh, my wife, I, my wife is Caucasian. She's U.S. citizen. Yeah, I it take me three years to apply for the uh, for the U.S. Cit- to citizenship, mm. right? And if you join the service after you have a green card, 
you only have to do it for 180 days, <laughs> which is six months. Yeah. So you can jo- you can process the, to become a citizen oh. in the United States. So for me, that's more important than anything else, more than money that I can make oh. because I can bring my family. Yeah. You know, you know I. So I I told myself it gonna take me. I don't care how long I want to bring everybody to United States. Yeah. You know, and I did. Yeah. It take me ten years. Ten years. I remember um, my cousin. Uh, his name is Wit P Wit. Mm. He uh, he told me that he was ten years around ten years old, I think. And then you applied for him and his five brother five brothers and sisters. Yeah. Everyone to come at one time. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> yeah. yeah, seven people, yeah. Uh, mom and dad. Right? Yeah, I wasn't born yet, so yeah. he took my mom there. Yeah, yeah. No, your mom is went later on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Later. I think she uh, almost the last pack because you know I have to bring the oldest one first to help me uh, make money so we can send home the money. Yeah, because bef- before I was the only one that sent home the money. Yeah. So everybody can have the opportunity to go to school, you see, and then I cannot afford to buy everybody a ticket, so oh. I have to do one or two at a time. Yeah, you know, so it's it's because I want to do it. No, my dad never tell me, hey, you you obligate to bring everybody to United States or oh. uh, 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 feed them or give them money, but I want to do it because they're my family. I have the opportunity to go to Taiwan, but they don't have a, a opportunity like I do. Yeah. I did, right? So I just say, hey, it's part of me that, that keep telling me that I, I owe it to my family. Yeah. Which is, I think I done more than enough yeah. for my family. Yeah. yeah. I, I always talk about that with Peach. I say like, how can you do that? Like somebody, usually I would think like if someone becomes like, successful like it, it would be kind of hard for them to like you take your hard-earned money and then you fly everyone from uh, your family over uh, maybe I can't imagine that because I don't have brothers and sisters but yeah I really uh, I really like like that story I don't I remember something you told me that that might be the reason why you did it I remember you told me always do things that make you proud of yourself mm. so I think maybe you bringing your family over is would make you proud of yourself as well yes like yeah. if I have done something that I no more people will not do it mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I mean you know always and you know what though all the thing that, that I do I, I like to keep I like to see people happy I like to see people smiling you know mm-hmm. you know I always go to the places that I, if I can help out, you know, I go to the orphanage location in Thailand, you know, give them food, you know, I have to sweat all over, but I still pay money, I still make me happy yeah. that I did something. I went back to my old sc- school, my my first year school, you know, and t- uh, tell, uh, talk to everybody, you know, don't give up, you know, when you're born poor, <laughs> Yeah, you know. Mm. Work hard, and you can be like I, I, I am. You know, yeah. thing like that. What I noticed from your life is, uh, you were given an opportunity, but also you, you worked hard when you got the opportunity. Exactly. Some people get an opportunity, but then they don't work hard, so then it, it, be, it doesn't become luck anymore. Exactly. So, yeah. So luck is when you, you know, get an opportunity and you work hard after you get it. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. I, I, I like that. Yeah. One thing that I I read in a book that I really like is um to uh to in how to like increase your luck. They said um if you are on a bus and you want a seat, you don't stand next to the door. Stand in the middle of where all the seats are because if someone gets up, you closer to the seat so you can get a seat. So then you'll be more lucky than the person standing next to the door. So then a way to increase your luck is to, you can place yourself in situations where you can get an opportunity. And also this book said, luck 
it, 90 percent of luck comes from other people so the more people you meet the more people you know it increases your luck as well so just for anybody listening that uh, that those are the two ways i think you can in increase your luck is meet more people get to know more people because if we look back on our lives most of the opportunities came from other people exactly just like me mm. uh all the opportunity i have in the past i was from the connection with people with mm. other people mm. who uh see that uh this kid work hard why don't we help him yeah you know and you know if you sit on your butt and you don't do anything nobody want to help you either you have to prove to them that you're willing to take that opportunity and work hard at it mm. they're not gonna be uh requested to help you yeah you know don't disappoint the people that are helping you uh -huh. you know that's what i would i would tell myself you wow know? yeah i you like know. that a lot don't hmm. you know so I and I don't when I was a kid I would, I don't like to hang around with the people at my age. I always hang around with the people older than me because I know that older people can teach me something. Yeah. They can actually they can support me. <laughs> 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 I mean like if, uh, if I don't have a food to eat they might feel bad for me, you know, uh -huh. and give me some food to eat too, you know. Yeah. Work a little bit harder, you know, and helping him to do what uh, them to do whatever it, they they got to feed me. Mm. That's why I hang around with the older people. You know, the older they are, the the better because they they see to life. You know, they see a lot of things. They see that uh, hey, this kid. You know, we if we give him the opportunity, he will be better than him today. Yeah. You know, so that's why you hang around with young boy, young kid at your age. You know, all they do is thinking about what what kind of game you want to play next yeah you know instead of how to build your life how to better your life yeah you know? i don't have the 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 teenage life you know when i was 18 years old i was in the u.s mm -hmm. start working and yeah. send home the money you know i don't go bowling i don't go do a lot of things the kid do i don't go to a discotheque you know yeah. you know i just keep on working i my goal is to to help my family you know, to help my family and the only ultimate goal that I have. Yeah. You know, so for me to in, to enjoy life like a, another teenager, I don't have. I don't even have a toys when I was a kid. You uh, know, so I because we're you so poor. Me, you, your mom hit you when you asked for a toy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Which she said like. I was, she, she beat me up, not yeah. just hitting me. Yeah. You know. So it's okay, yeah. you know, I, I just don't ask my mom again. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Never asked my mom for a toy. Uh, yeah. yeah, I remember you said, she said, uh, we don't even have money for food and you want a toy. Yeah. I remember you even said it was a, 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 to uh, water a toy gun. gun, water gun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It's cheap, but uh, we can't afford it, you know, mm. so. Yeah. But uh, I remember another story you told me, the, uh, you wanted these jeans. Yeah, like, and you would save money, and you would always go to the store and look at the jeans. Yeah, and I look at it so many times. I didn't buy it <laughs> <laughs> because it too. I like to send home the money. Yeah, I like to send home to my f my family so they can uh, have food to eat. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I don't need a designer jean. You know, yeah, it doesn't make me a better person. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so I I go look at it to make me mm -hmm. motivation. Uh, to try to make I do money. That. Yeah. I do that. I look at cars, like, uh, motivation to make money. Yeah. I um. So, just just to uh, give like a a key point for people listening, uh, one of the the main things I see that made you uh, that helped you growing up was you. Yeah, you spent time with older people. I I think everyone should should do that. Um, uh, maybe if you you like to be around your friends, yeah. Maybe one day spend time with with an elder i think that would uh that help a lot because yeah. elder people would not ask you to go do something stupid yeah doesn't ask you to use drug doesn't yeah. tell you to uh do the wrong thing yeah you know they always keep they want to give you a good advice yeah you know yeah. uh that's 
you know majority of the people yeah you know thai culture, thai culture and american culture is totally different mm. right when you grow up some more you know uh, and you learn that uh, uh thai older thai people doesn't like to listen to younger people opinion too much right yeah. but american people would do that yeah we want you to think of your on your own yeah and we'll support you yeah but uh the older people I mean, th- th- people that in a high uh, position in Thailand, mm. they like people to listen to them only. Yeah. They don't like, they don't like uh, people to tell them, hey, this is a good idea and support them. I, I don't, I, when I become a sergeant of police, you know, when my guy, I told him I want this to police the gang unit uh, to do whatever, you know, this is the way we should do. And a young police officer, you know, he just, uh our probation a couple of, a couple of years you know, asked me hey st- hey boss i have a uh, idea you know but, but i say okay his idea maybe take longer but i will give him the opportunity to do it hmm. if i don't give him the opportunity to do it then you know what he will never ask me uh, uh, never show his idea to me again oh. so i i want everybody to do this and then i support him i ask everybody hey have to keep this officer uh, fully support, you know, otherwise you against my direction. So everybody do helping. And I constantly uh, do on a follow up because I, I don't know this guy can do it. I don't want to send him and make him fail, you know, give him yeah. a mission and fail. I make sure he's become successful, right? Yeah. So I ask him all the time, hey, how you doing? I, uh, any help you need? You let me know, okay? He very proud and he do it, but it, after we finished, we done the mission, you know, I told him, he said, your mission, your, the way you do it is, is the right way, but it's uh, take a longer. Mm. But it's my way, I, I explained to him, and he can see, uh. you know, it's, it's, it's okay. You know, you don't shut people down just because yeah. they want to show you some idea, you know. Yeah. Is, if, is it wrong? Is it going to hurt the police department uh, or cost liability to the city? I will tell them no. But it's it's not gonna hurt in anybody. It to take a little bit longer. That's that's okay. Mm. People need to learn. Yeah. You know, you have to give the people the opportunity to learn. Yeah. You know, don't don't think that you are you are sergeant. You are you are officer in charge of the unit. You mm-hmm. your idea is the only idea. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Be a leader. You cannot be. Yeah. Be you cannot. Uh, hu bao. You know, you have to be have a heavy ear you know don't just uh-huh. listen to it you have to collect all information uh, like open yeah, yeah. and then listen. make decision from uh, analyze all this information that you have yeah and then you make a good yeah. decision yeah. you don't listen to in just any one source you have yeah. to listen to a lot of sources yeah right and then make a very intelligent yeah. decision yeah people will respect you for mm-hmm. that you know you have to know how to uh, manage people and you know how to analyze and using people th- in the right way. Yeah, I think you're really good at like with people skills. I remember when I would go to Thai town and if they knew my mom, they would say like, oh my God, your uncle is like a really good talker, like really good with people. Everyone likes you. And I, I, I like that you give people an opportunity to make mistakes. You don't tell them what to do. It's very opposite of a lot of like Thai adults here a lot of thai adults they kind of just tell you what to do and don't listen to your opinion but i like talking to you because you listen to my opinion you never say that i'm wrong but then you you'll give me an idea and lead me to a different way of thinking maybe you even let me make mistakes out of every relative i've ever spoken to like family member everyone tells me like uh about to like be good to my mom and like she loves me and all of these things try to make me miss my mom and love my mom but you never told me any of that you would just tell me stories about my mom and it'd make me love my mom and miss my mom and that's why I went back to America because I talked to you (laughs) yeah to go visit my mom and then uh, I I realized like it made me think like oh the the way that you do things is very different from other people. It makes me really see that 
Oh, that's a big reason why you're very successful because you listen to other people, you make other people feel like not lower than you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's a very important thing, especially I see people online. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people want to like look higher. Mm -hmm. I remember you told me something else I really like. You said, never do anything that makes other people feel less than you. Exactly. I remember you told me that and I wrote it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I really, really like the way you, you do things. If you want to build people, you have to build them ego, have it uh, like a, you know, build them to feel that they have confidence. Mm. They can do the the job, you know. You don't make them feel like a uh, their 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 idea or thing thinking is uh, very is is not good, you know. Mm. You know, you know. Another word: treat people with respect. You know, respectful is 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 the most important. You yeah. know. You know, many time in life, you know, I people uh, come to me and hurt me. But you know what? I don't stop seeing people. I don't stop people from coming to me because then you know I I not learn anything anymore because I have a bad feel bad experience. So I stop uh, communicate with people or uh, stop communication with people. No, it's not. It shouldn't be that like that. You mm. you need to. Give yourself an opportunity to learn other people, and then give people uh, the opportunity to learn about you too. You know, yeah. because you know, one thing: if people doesn't like you, no matter how much you do, they still hate you. <laughs> yeah, they still don't like you. Okay, yeah. and then uh, the people that like you, it doesn't matter what you do; they continue to like you anyway, <laughs> right? Yeah. And people don't give a crap about you. Yeah, they they don't even know you exist. Mm -hmm. So you need. You don't need to to make them love you or like you. Mm -hmm. The people that love you, you you have to spend a lot of effort and time to make them continue to like you. Mm -hmm. Do the do thing for them. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that don't don't like you, don't spend even a single minute with them because it doesn't matter what you do to them. They uh. don't. They not. They continue to don't like you anyway. Uh. So forget them. Yeah. Spend time. With somebody that you love, love you, love them back, love yeah. them more. I, I just read this this uh, quote today, and I took a picture of it. I'm gonna find it and read it. It's very similar to that. Oh. Where is it? Did I take a picture? No, I don't think I took a picture. I'm sorry, everyone. I didn't take <laughs> a picture. Oh man, but very similar to that. Like instead of wasting time with people that you know, that don't like you, you would use more energy with people that already like you. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, uh, do things for them. Yeah. Do things, um, uh, make them uh, feel good about themselves, make them, uh, you know, the, uh, the opportunity that you can help them, you know, do it, you know. Yeah. So, you know, like, I've, uh, like me, spend effort, you know, to do things for the people that like you. Mm. You, know. you know, why wasting time and spend with the people that don't like you to make them like you, mm -hmm. for what? Yeah. What is what is it in it for you for anybody anyway? Yeah. You know, so forget that. Yeah. Another uh, key point that I see is people skills for uh, to be successful in life is a, a a really good book I recommend is How to Win Friends and Influence People uh, by Dale Carnegie I think that that I remember reading somewhere it said. Um, like almost your whole life you will be around people so you need to practice people skills and that book will really help you practice people skills so I, I, I recommend that book right my next question for you is since I have like a very um, wide audience there's a, a big portion of them they're very uh, very spiritual like uh, they believe yeah like you know. In God, in uh, in Buddhism, very st strong religious people, right? Yeah, Buddhism also like uh, there's a lot of um, Muslims and, yeah. and Christians, like every right, 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 right. And then I just want to ask, like, and some people don't believe in any of that, but they're just 
they've met there like very spiritual people believe in energy or the universe do you do you have any type of like practice that you do that is spiritual or like any beliefs that are um yeah like spiritual yes beliefs? i do because you know you have to have something mm-hmm. you know that you can talk to yeah when you almost give up you know you know when you feel down uh, and get kicked in the face many times or doing yeah. this thing you know so you need somebody to talk to sometimes it's not another human being mm-hmm. you know it's a spiritual something that you believe in mm-hmm. you know i i believe in buddhist i'm a buddha right mm-hmm. buddhism right? so i before i go to bed i always i will play anyway you know mm. and uh i always always that uh never even when i see the temple i always keep uh sawadee like this uh. all the time you know because i believe that uh but something uh, you know i go to the i when i was in the in the marines you know uh instead of us uh, stay in the back and chai my sh- boot yeah. they say hey, you want to go to the catholic church i go oh. you want to go to the protestant church i go uh. i want to learn oh cool. i want to learn what what kind of teaching that they're teaching pe- people mm. you know and one thing i learned you know every religious you know even muslim teach people how to be a good human being yeah. you know to 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 not be selfish mm-hmm. you know to do things for other people to, you know to give yeah. you know you know and then when you give the more you give the, the thing good thing will come to you yeah you know that's you know if you when i was young you know i cannot donate money because i don't have money to donate right i use my energy my 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 uh, phys- physical yeah. to do thing for temple that's what i did you know so I that's why I think is you know uh, when you are very poor most of the poor people in Thailand they are more strongly religious more than uh, rich people mm. because you know the rich people they don't have anything to play anymore they don't play they they just uh, enjoy life right mm. but the poor people you know you see uh, they're willing to go yeah. out of the way to get up early to cook food for the monk yeah. and to donate money the poor people donate more money than the rich people yeah you know rich people they this guy can donate 40 million or 60 million you know it doesn't mean anything yeah because it's a commercial too you know yeah you know it's do for the, his business right mm-hmm. but the poor people when they donate money part of their salary part of the food you know yeah they do it from their heart they, because they they believe that uh, well maybe next life will be better mm-hmm. right you know you, you can you know like a tune he running around you know uh, and make uh, over uh, one billion Thai baht right yeah most of people that give the money is the poor people mm. not the rich with the rich give uh, maybe 40 million 60 million so what yeah right the bulk of the money came from poor people oh. the people that believe in uh in good thing mm-hmm. believe in giving to other other, other people yeah right so uh, to me that's a very sincere uh form of the giving mm. you know pe- you know and i know that uh more i met i met with many people that poor mm-hmm. they're more religious than the people that <laughs> not poor i can tell you right now oh yeah yeah they go to yeah. temple they participate in everything they can mm-hmm. the 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 reason the monk in in thailand they can survive today because the poor people believe in them mm-hmm. but a lot of monks is disappointing the people because then a few bad monk yeah in 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 uh in book you know yeah. doesn't do a good job yeah be uh, representing the Buddhism. Yeah, I I didn't understand that until I moved to Thailand and I see, oh, there's some there's some bad ones, but then the bad ones just make all of them look like it's like you have a 
a sack of apples and you yeah. have one bad apple everyone yeah. thinks all the other apples are, are exactly bad as well. so the, like like I said, don't keep up don't con- don't keep up on your religious religious you know yeah if you believe that keep on doing you do it for yourself mm-hmm. you're not doing for anybody else you do it for yourself yeah. you don't own belief it make you happy mm-hmm. it make you peace of mind you come to a conclusion that hey once in a while you want to uh, be alone mm-hmm. and think and uh, recap what you do the whole the whole day or the whole week the whole month the whole year what you do mm-hmm. and what is keep you going maybe uh, religious keep you going mm. Okay. Um, so now uh, I'm going to ask you a fun question. Someone asked me this recently. He said, "Tell me three animals that just that come in your head right away." To me, uh, is I think is to me right away. Yeah. Right now is very popular. It's a sewer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the second one. Uh. Dog, uh-huh. and a uh, cow, and a cow. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, anyone listening, you could play that game too. Um, yeah, I uh, I said that as well. Like the first, my animal was a a tiger. Oh, so that means tiger for people that don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my uncle just said tiger, right? Sua. Tiger. Or a yeah. lion. Tiger. 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 And then uh, I think you said dog in English, right? Dog yeah. and then cow. So mine was tiger, and then uh, I think a turtle, right? What did I say when when P Nino I asked me about the animals? I remember I said tiger, lion, it, yeah, lion, and then like it was either turtle or bird. Yeah. Bird. 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 bird? Yeah. Okay. So mine was lion, bird, and then turtle. <laughs> so um, he said that he uh, he asked this. He's like a his like they do business, and then they ask everybody this question that w- gonna work for him. And then he said the first one is the animal is how people see you. So people see you as lion, like a leader. So lion, tiger, tiger. Usually represents leader, and uh, yeah, when you and then the second one would be how you see yourself. So um, he said dog represents loyalty and companion. I don't know what cow represents. Uh-huh. Yeah, work cow. hard, man. Work hard. I think so. That's t u a t o n That's your your true self. Cow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So work hard and and honest. So that's the true self. Of you is is a cow. Gentle. Yeah. Oh, gentle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I look I look tough, but inside I'm very gentle. You know. Yeah. Uh, is that is true? Because it's true. Yeah. Because I, sometimes you know when I talk, people think that I'm uh, uh, not very, very, uh, harsh. You know. Hmm. But you know it, what is. Uh, because I like to say something very straightforward. I don't like to hitting around and come yeah. to the point. You know, yeah, yeah. so I <laughs> sometimes it's coming like a uh, this guy is mean. No, it's not. It's just I don't. I want to. I don't want to waste time. Mm-hmm. You know, so I tell go to the point and tell them. You know, mm. and but in st- normally I like to help people. Yeah. You know, I don't want to like I said. I want to give people the opportunity to do. What they can be best, mm-hmm. you know. What can do best, you know, something like. That. So, that's me, and I, I'm, a, I'm always work hard. Yeah. Doesn't matter, you know. Uh, when I was in the uh, marine, I work hard to become uh, E5 in 23 months, get promoted, uh, meritoriously promotion. Every rank that I make is meritoriously promotion, right? Mm. Before my time, and then uh, I was uh, become. Uh, uh, Detective, sergeant, you know, and then I stop because I I like being sergeant because I yeah. I can help people. Yeah. If I become lieutenant, I disconnect it with people. You stay in the office, right? Yes, you know, I want to be with people with the police officer, mm. so I can be a middle management, you know, helping them mm-hmm. both both side, you yeah. know. 
And uh, when I work at the Thai Civic, uh, I was a uh, vice president in charge of the uh, human resort purchasing and things like that, right? So I listen to people problem all the time. Mm. You know, I go and uh, I start work at inst- instead of everybody coming at nine, I come in eight o'clock, and then I start working since eight o'clock until uh, maybe sometimes seven or eight p.m. because I like to listen to. I want to let them know that I care about them. Yeah, you know, listen to the problem. What can I do to help them out? Mm. You know, when I teaching people, I teaching uh, this guy a brand new uh, manager. When I assign him to do something, I watch him closely. Would I assign some some job to the veteran manager? Right, I don't have to be. So my 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 management style is different. Mm-hmm. Right, the young. The young, brand new manager. I want to be a little bit micro manager, uh-huh. so they they learn some. They, you know, I can teach helping them, right? Yeah. For the the veteran manager who did a good job already, I just give him a direction. This is what I want to get done, and I leave him alone. Mm-hmm. So when you go ask two people, hey, what is, what is uh, Woody? The way Woody, he's a he, is he the micro manager? This guy say no, he's not. He oh. just keep and he leave me alone. But that this guy, young 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 manager, will say, oh, he's a micromanager. He oh. he always ask me, you know, but very detail, you know. Yeah. Because and then explain to the guy later on. He say, the reason I ask you the detail thing because I want you to uh, become a better manager. Mm. One, I trust you that you can do the job. I will leave you alone. Mm. <laughs> That's my style. Ah, so you different know. people, different. Techniques. You, yeah. you cannot, yeah. You cannot, cannot use the same techniques. Yeah. When you try to teach people how to do uh, the job, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, know? I see. And then you cannot get the job done if you treat them the same. Yeah. You cannot, you know, because not everybody, like I said, not everybody can be minister or become a captain or yeah. you know they. You you have to have some people work as a the troop. You have some people work as a the leader. Yeah. You have somebody working as a general or thing like that. Yeah. It's, it's different. Yeah. Different people have a different job. Yeah. My job as a, a human resort, right? I have to find a job, a right job for the right people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I cannot just put them in a position and make them fail. Yeah. It's not. It's not my style. Yeah. So you have to observe the person first. I re- I like that thing you said. If the person is like smart and hardworking, they can be the general. General. What would that be in like today's world? Maybe a uh, executive manager. Okay. Right? right. And if they're uh, smart but lazy, you can they can be a manager. Uh huh. But if they're lazy and uh, smart, you can. I mean, if they if they're not too smart but they're lazy. Mm-hmm. You can still use them mm-hmm. because you tell them exactly what to do. Yeah. But the people that uh, uh, smart, I mean, not uh, kind of not very smart. Yeah. Very dumb. Yeah. And they, but they're very hardworking per, per people. Yeah. You cannot use them. You have to kill them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In a, this is a Kongbing philosophy. Yeah. Chinese you know? philosophers. Fra- yeah. yeah. Because you, if you keep them. You know, it can hurt you more than uh, you know. You have uh, Kong Meng say you have to kill them. Yeah. Because you know, uh, just like my manufacturing, right? Yeah. The people that not educate don't know what they're doing, right? But they're hardworking, right? They keep on producing a bad part. Yeah. Then you know we send it to uh, to the customer, yeah. and we get charged back. Yeah. It costs us millions of dollars. You yeah. Know? So you, you cannot afford this kind of people. Yeah. So it goes against like opposite thinking. Like if somebody is smart. I mean, if somebody is stupid but works hard, you you would people usually say that that person is okay to work for you because they work hard. But then I I've had that experience as well, and I I agree. Like you have to, they can cause more problem because if they're not that smart, they'll just keep doing things, doing things, and wrong. it might wrong, yeah, and cause more problem for you. Yes. So I like that how it says you have you have to hire someone that. Maybe if they're not that smart and they're also lazy, you can still command them, and you also need the manager to watch them, right? So then they'll actually do things. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Really like that. Um, I I know that uh, Ja has prepared like 
these qu- the, uh, a small game for us, like the the questions, right? What 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 is it? I'll say it since you don't have a microphone. Yeah, it's a it's a game where we bring up really bad or like you know bad situations and we try to turn it into a positive, yeah, positive thinking game. So, okay, what is it? It's in it's in English. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, say it and then I'll repeat it. Yes. Um, you lose. What you lose your passport in a different country? Mm. What is how it in, in foreign country? Yeah, in a foreign country. Yeah. Then you know what? You just go to the report to the uh, the um, uh, the embassy. The closest. Yeah. You know, the, let's say you from you from Thailand, right? Yeah. You losing your passport in uh, uh, in U.S. Yeah. So where you go? You have to go to the consular office. Yeah. To get a replacement. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing. Yeah, you go there, and then maybe you spend more time in that country. Yeah, have fun more, like get to visit more places. Exactly. Why yeah. are you waiting? Yeah. Then you know you have excuse to tell the immigration officer that hey, look, the reason I have to stay longer because I lo- I lost my passport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Make a situation better. Yeah. You know, spend more time uh, tour more. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. What's the next one? What the heck? You uh, drive a car and you hit someone and they die. What's positive about that? Oh my god, that's so hard. Who thought of that? <laughs> oh my god, I can't think of anything positive with that. Well, it depends. You know, a couple of chong kun die. I mean, uh, when you hit somebody, uh, accident and ho- hit somebody to death. You no. Know. Yeah, and they die. He he died. You have to think that uh, is is your fault, <laughs> or is the guy fault, or you know, you cannot just believe that uh, because you hit somebody, it's your fault. Uh. What happened if the people jump in front of your car to want to suicide, kill them, oh. right? Oh. So you have to analyze the situation. Yeah. Uh, what happened? You uh, you are speeding, uh. or you drunk? You know. If you're not drunk, you're not speeding, and you know somebody jump in front of your car. Yeah, for insurance money. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, you know, nothing you can do, you know. Yeah. But but it's really difficult to yeah. make it positive yeah. because yeah, it's a traumatic yeah. experience yeah. when you kill somebody. But I like your out of the box thinking. I I like that. I I want people to hear the story of how you you caught a gang shooting before. You you remember that one? Oh yeah yeah, you know. Uh, there were one street gang uh, in North Hollywood, you know, uh, got killed. You know, I can tell you, it's a violent boy gang uh, got killed. Uh, and is that the name of the gang? Yes, violent? the name of a violent boy with oh. a V, like a Victor I N E L A N D, uh-huh. which is they call them. Uh, violent boy because they're on the street of uh, violent. Oh. <laughs> okay, in not Hollywood. So one of them get killed, and we try to looking uh, locate the suspect who killed them. Most of the time, you know, the gangs uh, like to brag about what they, who they kill, especially yeah. when they're opposite gang, right? So their opposite, their enemy is 18th Street gang bang, and then uh, why, uh Canton gang, all these different gang. You yeah. Know. So we've been located, you know, try to find out who killed this gangbanger, you know, for a long time. We mm-hmm. can't find, you know, for months and months. So I have a meeting with my unit. Say maybe you know what? Most most of the time, right? The gang will bragging about who they kill. Yeah. But this time, nobody bragging about it. Maybe they make a mistake. They kill their own people. Mm. You better go check them out. And my officer say, "Oh, you such Jews. That's that's weird. No, no way. Man. Yeah. All this, everybody think I'm a, I'm I kind of why why come up with this kind of idea? Yeah. But you know what happened? They go out there in three days. They cut the bad guy. It and happened. before that, you could it took you tried to find it for a month already. A yeah. few months. 
Yeah, and they caught the bad guy because they start asking the the same gang, hey, you, you know, and then they tell me, oh yeah, this guy making mistake. His name is, you know, uh, so, so he the killed s- their own gang. Ah, you know? uh, they killed their own gang. Yeah, so you go find somebody of different gang. You know, you're not gonna, you know, but you pressure them enough. You know, the people that in the same gang, mm-hmm. they will cop out. You know, oh. you know, so and then tell you who they did it. You know? Wow. Yeah. So yeah, that's the outside of the box thinking. That it's really nice. Uh, I'm curious, how do you pressure a gang member to tell, to tell on their own gang? Well, you know, uh, we have a lot of, we have a lot of people, in uh, uh, a lot of location was sanctioned by the by the judge that this location you cannot be hanging around, you know. It, uh, uh, gang injunction, and we, so we can stop them and uh, uh, oh. interview them and do whatever thing, you know. And then you oh. sometimes we, they do a uh, something like a graffiti and thing. Like we can take them to the station, arrest oh. them, you know. One time I have a people that come and complain to me. He's uh, almost like a lieutenant in a gang, uh, his gang, his oh. own gang, right? He came to me and complained that uh, my officer always harassing him. Oh, I see. Uh, and I say, where's location? He said, this location. I say, then you know what? You have to complain against me and the, and the judge because the judge they give the order. Nobody can hang around here. Oh. If you look like a gangbanger, you will be interviewed. Oh. If you interview last minute, I see you again. We'll interview you again. Okay. Oh. So I explain to them, you know, if you are on the opposite shoe, you know what you do when you get the direction from uh, your boss to uh, to do your job, you know. So he understand, and he later on he become my snitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then he give me the the murder case that I've been looking for for months too. Oh my god! Yeah. Wow. So what, what murder case? Uh, another 18th Street oh. uh, gang that uh, have a have the fight with another gang in the Seven Eleven. They was on tape and everything. Oh. You know. So, I mean, you know. So a lot of time, you know, like I, like I say in the past, you know, you treat people with respect. You explain to them why you do, why you do, do what you did, you know, yeah. why you did what you, do, what you, whatever, right? Yeah. Then you know they, and you treat them with the uh, dignity a little bit, you know. Yeah. You know, and then they will become your friend, oh. and they tell you. Hey, by the way, you know, because he tell him different gang anyway. He tried to put another. Uh, gang member in jail oh. in different gangs so he told me who did it <laughs> so you know I, I oh, got a suspect cool. that's cool you yeah. know oh I remember you also caught a guy that would just the ser- like a serial killer like he would just like kill homeless people I think no did no he's he not ca- killing homeless he killed he's called night nice stalker yeah. yeah he killed everybody <laughs> he killed one time he went into the Thai family house in uh, uh, Foothill Division. Yeah. And uh, husband and wife happened to fight, so just, and it's, uh, it's a summer night. Mm. So she's, she came out and sleep in the a, uh, in a living room mm-hmm. and it had a, a sliding glass door open. Yeah. Only locked the screening door. So the uh, Richard would come in and cut the screening and come in with the gun and point the gun at her say hey who where's the man in the house so she say he's in, in the in the bedroom and he just walk into the bedroom and shoot him in the head just oh. like that and rape her and uh rape the five years old kid and then she but she was so good that she'd be able to talk her way out of getting killed by him hmm. so uh, then you know the detective that in charge of the murder case he asked me to uh, to interview her because she's from Thailand, uh. and that time you know she doesn't speak anything at all. Not because she don't speak English, but she was in shock, mm. you know. So I be able to get the composite and then be able to send it out to the to the media. So they show him picture on the composite picture in the uh. media, and a few days later he got arrested in uh, in uh, East. Uh, East division of the uh, Hollenbeck, he got arrested in the Hollenbeck. Whoa! Yeah, so by the by the people saw him, and he tried to steal the car, and the, and the Hispanic people saw him, 
and recognize him in the composite that beat the shit out of him. Oh, you know, wow. Before they called the police. Cool. <laughs> okay, so she she would describe to you what he looked like, and then you would describe it to someone that could draw? Yeah, oh. to people from a SID, Scientific Investigation Division. Uh, nice. Yeah. So. Crazy uh, stories. Uh, I have a lot of stories yeah. to tell, but uh, we don't have enough time. Yeah, what time do you have to go? No, I mean, uh, you... You already been sick now that you only have a few minutes left. Yeah. Um, that th That's because I didn't know how long you have. <laughs> uh, well, how much? Do you have any uh, buddy you need to talk to, what to do? Hmm? Okay, anyway, if you want to talk a little bit longer, it's okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, because you have to go to China tonight, yeah, right? Okay, yeah. Well, okay, let's do one more of those questions. Of the the positive question. Oh, so um, the situation is, you forgot you had an appointment, and it's already past two hours. You just remembered. Oh, I had an appointment with this person. What is? Try to think positive about that situation. That's that sucks, man. I hate when people are late. I hate when I'm late too. I get really mad. But uh, the opportunity in Thailand is very good to give the excuse that the traffic is bad. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's it's not good. Uh, when you have appointment and you were two hours late, right? Yeah. Then you know, uh, and you remember it. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's happened to me. Oh, you forgot. You forgot. I forgot about something that I have a you know uh, the appointment with you and you know my schedule was kind of because I don't have a secretary like like yeah. you do you know you don't, you don't have Jai and her to help yeah. you, help, help me you know so uh, I just f totally forgot that I have appointment with you uh -huh. so I uh, so I have to call that person it's not a very good uh, feeling about it you mm -hmm. know because it's very difficult to explain why my appointment is not important for you to remember, <laughs> thing uh. like that. You know, it's just, unfortunately, uh, this is very difficult to make it positive. Yeah, know? it's very difficult. Uh, yeah, these are too hard to get, make, it, make it easier. <laughs> but, uh, because my, myself, you know, I, I don't like people to be late. Yeah, my mom would always say, you're early, you're always early. You're like 15 minutes early, always. I like that. I remember hearing about um, in America, like for movie sets, they say if you are on time, you're late. And if you're 15 minutes early, you're on time. That's a really cool saying. I, I like that. Hmm. Yeah. So um, I guess we only have like five minutes left. What could... Oh, we, we, could, we could give away these books. Okay, so I have a question. You can think of a question to ask the people reward the people that listened for almost two hours I think or more my question is um, where did uh, Uncle Woody go to school uh, like out of Thailand that's one and the second one is how old was Uncle Woody when he went to school for the first time let me, let me show you if this is correct is that, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't see who's uh, watching right now. So, yeah, give me your... Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah you can bring it here. It's still, it will still charge. Oh, yeah. Do you have any question that you want to like test them for your book? How many book you uh, okay. We 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 can do how old when I get to U US the first time. Oh dang. I know. Is it uh is it Yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, just 
ขยายต่อไปไหนก็ได้เดี๋ยบโซ่ so, ใครลุงวูดี้อายุเท่าไหร่ตอนเริ่มไปโรงเรียนเราก็อายุเท่าไหร่ตอนไปที่อเมริกาครั้งแรกเราก็ไปเรียนที่ประเทศไหน uh, yeah. Let's see. These are really hard, so I don't know if they'll be able to answer. Do we have a American audience? Yeah. Do we? Denmark. Malaysia. Oh. Malaysia. Yep. Actually, we have a English listener. <laughs> yeah. There is. Um, People said I was not there in the time. That was really early. That was like in the beginning. Maybe we can uh, ask something that we said earlier, like recently. Or maybe uh, what is the what is the most important ingredient for successful? Yeah, can do that. But what my what is mine? Oh, oh! Someone said nine years old for first year at school, Katie. Wow, and then someone said, okay. "Yeah," and then 18 years old when Uncle went to U.S. Wow, and yeah, you deserve. You guys deserve this book. Nisha yeah, N Nat, Nisha, Nisha, and Katie. Yeah, you guys get a, a my uncle's book. Uh, they can can they read Thai? Uh, the Thai or the? Uh, oh yeah, are they Thai? <laughs> one is Thai. The other one, I'm not sure. Uh, Yes, please send a message in my email. Let me see if they're Thai. In my inbox, I mean. Is this person Thai? This person is Thai. Yeah, this person. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh, this was a very great live. So motivational and positive. From Jess Maddock. From Paris. You're from Paris? Crazy. Okay. Um... What else did we ask? So they knew you're nine years old, 18 years old. Someone said perseverance. Yeah, for success. You, is, that, is that yours, number one? Attitude. Attitude. Uh, okay, so. But I remember perseverance was one. You said hardworking, perseverance, and attitude. Yeah. That can be, yeah. Yeah? Perseverance. By Sarah. Sarah, please uh, send me an inbox. Yeah, please inbox me. Address. Yeah, your address. And then now we have two, two books left. Hmm? You need to make an English one now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah, I could tell by the last name. All right. What other question? Hmm. You have any? Hmm. Oh yeah, we have shirts too. Yeah, there's a guy. Hello from Sydney, Australia. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. <laughs> She's they supposed to say oi, oi, oi. <laughs> hmm. What? Okay. What is um, Uncle Woody's uh, dream right now? Like, what does he want to do for? Uh, he's made a joke about after, it. After I retire. Yeah, after retire. I'll give you this shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oi, oi. Hmm. Help, help me think of another question. You have anything? Hmm. Oh. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um... This one is not a question, but uh, I'd like to hear about... Oh, someone said become a teacher. Become a teacher and what else? That's half. That's half, but that's good. Th but just press that right now. Uh, Gavin yes, Gavin James Higgins. Um, I'd like to know what you guys got from uh, listening to our podcast and live. Like if you can comment maybe some key points, what you really liked, uh, what you learned, and then um, yeah, we'll read it, and then we'll send you 
uh, a good a good uh, comment, I will send you one of these books. A t t-shirt, right? Or a t-shirt, yeah. What what is like a highlight in this book? The highlight like? in this book is just uh, to motivate people mm. who are born poor, mm. and you don't have to stay poor. Yeah. yeah. Ah, okay. It, what's your? Do you remember like what's your favorite part in this book? Um. I don't. I haven't read it for a while. <laughs> yeah, many many years. Yeah. Mm. So I, I like them all, hmm. because it's, I, I think, is. Yeah, is can motivate people. Yeah. Uh, you know to, to walk in the right path. Mm. You know. Yeah, man. A lot of people experience. Hmm. Interesting to hear about a Thai person's life in USA. Reminds me of what all my elders have taught me: work hard. What this one other person got? Don't spoil a kid just for money and be positive thinking. Born poor, but no need to die poor. Mm. I like that. Mm. You want to give to that person? Yeah. Yeah. Seems like he pay attention. A yeah. person that person <laughs> pay attention. <laughs> yeah. Kun Kanyapat. Um, I th- th- you get the book. The person that wanted that knew that Uncle Woody wanted to become a teacher gets the shirt. Yeah. And what someone said. Thank you both for your time and love. Listen to your elders. Be the best person you could be. Never give up. So we have one more shirt and one more book, right? Think so. What else can we ask? You know, uh, the part of people that answer that they never give up. You know, I think that's a good. The main point of this this conversation, mm-hmm. anyway. That that's this that's yeah that person uh, already got a book. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, hmm. she from a uh, where she from? Uh, oops. Whoa. Where? Where are you from, Sarah? I see that. She teaches Thai. 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 Uh, yeah, I, I practice Thai that way. I would read interesting books even if I didn't understand it, and I would use Google Translate on my phone. She lives in Lat Prao. She lives in Lat Prao. Cool. Um, I like I like what this person said. Be around older people to be successful. Yeah, yeah I like I like that one. That's that's one. Uh, yeah, that's that's yeah. The bin listen. Nakan Seng. I like that one. Uh, um, would we give a book for that one? I think. What I don't know what to give. What do you which What do you want to give for that answer? A book uh, or a shirt? Uh, yeah, just give him a book. A book. Okay. So the next one is is uh, the shirt. What? Let me see. Let me see. Hmm. What can we ask for this one? Okay, just a just the easy one. Um, what branch of the military did my uncle go to, and why? Oh, that one's not that one's not easy, but yeah, why why did he go to that one? Yeah, I remember that you went. You were gonna. I'll I'll, I'll save it for someone else to answer. So why did he go to? Uh, become that part of the military, and then you get this Uncle Woody shirt. Boop. 
So what are you going to do when you go uh, after this? After this? Yeah. I have to go uh, prepare for my uh, journey. You know, have to go to China for 10 days mm -hmm. with my f uh, good friend. Uh, he invited me to go. It went, your flight is like t two, in midnight? two in the morning. Two in the morning? <laughs> Tonight. Wow. I mean, uh, tomorrow morning. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I get to stay uh, awake or go back and get some sleep or something like that. Oh, know? yeah. It's Sunday, so the traffic is not bad. Yeah. Cool. Um, did you let me know when someone answers? It might take a while. Oh, that. That's a that's a good that's a really good reason. But it, it wasn't. Uh, dang, I want to give you something for that. But. Uh, oh, die loud. That was the reason why he went into the military. But I'm asking. Um, why did he choose he okay i'll make it easier so he uncle woody wanted to join the air force but why did he join the marines instead yeah it's a pretty hard question <laughs> so he could take his family to the u.s yeah that, that's true yeah. but that's not. John Chu from Singapore. Great to see you alive. Hello, John Chu. Mm -hmm. I was invited to go speak at Singapore, but uh, something happened. I think I got sick. Mm -hmm. To learn English? No, that's not. That's one reason, but not the main reason. Is it because you couldn't find parking? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. But I like the uniform. I've been mean, the, the field, the proud, the Marine. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, you couldn't find the parking for the, the Air Force and you just parked at the Marine and you saw the low. The, okay. Yeah. Congratulations, Lin Jarinya. <laughs> okay, you get a... That's a very detailed... Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. You deserve you deserve this shirt. Okay, please send your uh, address address into my inbox. All right. Mm. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Uncle Woody, for doing this. You're welcome, this. and uh, thank you, uh, the audience, John audience, that listen to my old story. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, it's very. Useful, and I hope they feel very lucky because I feel very lucky to talk to you. So I, I feel lucky to have the opportunity to. Uh, this is almost like a uh, indirectly teaching people. Yes, you know because my experience is uh, uh, is very to me. I think I think it's very valuable to me. Yeah, and, I and, think and so. somebody can learn it from me. Yeah, you know, and there's so much more. Yes. There's there's so much more that you you have to talk about. So when uh, we'll do this again, whenever you're free, and okay. then get get uh, and see if the people want. Yeah, let me know how how you guys like it. Okay. Yeah, you have to see that your audience wanted to hear from me or not. <laughs> yeah, but the last times they all did, so I'm sure. All right, Uncle Woody. Um, I hope this podcast could help you or somebody that you